Hi everybody, it's just me LTM. I'm very excited to try out my Addy Express Professional knitting machine for the very first time. So far all I've done is taken this out of the box, I added on the legs and I have clamped it to my kitchen table as I showed you in the unboxing video and now I am ready to get going. I have grabbed myself some yarn, it's just some um, cheapy acrylic yarn from my stash. Uh, it's 8 ply and the first thing that I'm going to attempt to make is a beanie because it seems beanies are quite easy to make. It's, you just knit a tube and as you're casting off the stitches you just thread a thread through with a yarn needle and then pull tight to form the top of the beanie. So pretty simple. I've seen patterns for um, ones that are reversible. So you basically make a really long tube and then fold half of it inside the other half to make it reversible. But I'm just going to do one. It's my very first time using this machine. So we could be in for a few laughs here. I will speed things up where I can so this isn't so painful for you. So I'm following the instructions that are in the booklet which I've got here down on the bench next to me. It says pull some of the thread off which I have done and through the middle of the AD Express Professional until it touches the uh, table. Then wrap the yarn around the black needle on the right. So I've got to get to the black needle first. So these are the needles here that they're talking about. And there are black ones just here at the start. There are just three black ones. All of the rest of the needles are white. So it's saying come through until you've got a black one here. And then thread this yarn underneath it like this. Wrap the yarn around the black needle on the right hand side. Start slowly turning the handle clockwise and while doing this alternate the position of the yarn from in front of to behind of the rising needles. So I'm starting off with it in front. So I'm guessing the next one needs to go behind and then the next one in front. So in front, behind, that just clicked clunking sound was because it just clicked over a row because the black needles indicate the beginning of a row so it's just clicked over to be row one so this looks fairly straightforward this is the casting on it's fairly quick too I thought casting on would be a bit of a pain in the bum and a long slow process and I'm now back to the beginning because here is a black needle so now it says when you reach the first black needle again, the yarn runs outwards. So instead of wrapping around, I'm going to put the yarn through this uh, yarn guide. So open the yarn holder by pushing it open to the left, place the yarn halfway to start. It's essential to close the yarn holder to avoid damages at the needle. So pushing that over until it has closed. Now it says whether you place the yarn halfway or entirely into the yarn holder depends on the yarn. It should run smoothly. So what they're saying is you can either have it like this where you can see the yarn holder is totally closed or there's actually a hole in the middle so you can have the yarn coming out of the yarn holder like this. So I guess that would be appropriate if you've got a really thick yarn perhaps. Um, but I'm only just using a normal 8 ply so I'm going to leave mine like this. Next instruction says you can begin now. I'm just going to turn the row counter back to zero before I start so that I can see whether that's working and how many rows I do. Do not use force while turning the handle clockwise, it must move smoothly. If you have the feeling that stitches are not positioned on the needles tightly enough, simply pull at the bottom of the knitted piece. Well, that's a bit tricky at the moment because I don't have any knitted piece, but what they're saying is I grab the, or the, the material, the item that's being produced, if I pull down on that, that will help it stay on the needles better. And certainly with sock knitting machines that I've seen before, you have weights that you can attach to um, 
to the bottom of the yarn so it helps to pull down the yarn which makes it stay on the needles a lot better with that tension that it creates. So I am just going to give this a whirl and see how this goes. So there's my beginning stitch, just making sure that yarn is okay there. And then I guess I just go around like this. Okay, that first row was a bit clunky, but it is certainly now a lot better. And the row counter is working. I've now done four rows. So this is um, this is easy peasy. I have to tell you, I am just holding the yarn. It gets a little bit tight where the black needles are, but I think that's simply because it is ticking over the row counter, which you can hear a big clunk when it gets there and it does that. So I'm going to speed this section up. Okay, I've now done 15 rows and you can see that it is starting to create a tube. The knitting is quite loose. Um, so what I'm going to try now is I'm going to try pulling on the yarn to create a little bit of tension and see what difference that creates in the item that gets produced, in the knitting that gets produced. So I'm going to pull on this and give some tension. There's not much science behind this because there's no way for me to gauge whether I'm pulling consistently at the same kind of tension or not. I'm not, you know, there's just nothing I can do about that. So I'm just going to put some more tension on the yarn as it's going through the yarn holder and see what, uh, what the result is for that. I'll do another 15 rows doing that. So that's another 15 rows and let's have a look. You can certainly see that the knitting in these 15 rows that I've just done whilst I was holding some tension on the yarn is a lot tighter, a lot tighter than where I was just really holding the yarn and wasn't putting any tension on it. So that's really interesting. So I'm actually getting a bit of length in here. That's 30 rows of knitting. And goodness me, when I think about how long that would take me to knit by hand, yeah, I would have got maybe two rows maybe done in the same amount of time. So I'm going to continue on. The uh, beanie that I saw being made earlier was made with 60 rows and now that I'm thinking about it this um, this circumference is not very big so maybe the looser knitting is a better way to go because it will give my item uh, better stretchability which considering many people's heads are rounder than this I probably need to allow for more stretch so I might just not hold the tension anymore and just let it go as it wants to pretty much so I'll speed up this next section I'm going to do 30 more rows so that I end up with 60 rows So what I might do, because you can't really see what's going on, I don't think. Um, well, my knitting is right down to the table. That's fantastic. So you can see it all here. This is how much it's done, which is a considerable amount. And when I said earlier that, um, you know, sometimes you can use weights. Um, so what someone else has, rec has uh, recommended so that your knitting isn't sitting on the table and then spinning around and around and causing problems is, is you just roll it on itself and just sit it here in the middle. That's not going to be in the way of anything, so that's perfectly fine. But you can't actually see from where I've got the camera located at the moment what's happening here and how the knitting is actually happening. So I'll just change the camera angle so that you can have a look and see what is actually happening here and how this machine is actually doing the knitting.
here are the needles so I'm going to turn the handle and you will be able to see what's happening here now notice over here sorry where the needle has gone down so the needle is this white bit and they go up and down and you'll see here where you can't see the needle there are these two little pegs and the stitch is being held on that peg so that needle, that black needle is going to grab that yarn, you can see it has come up and the previous row stitch is sitting here. So that's the previous row, this is the current row being created. That needle has grabbed that yarn and then it takes it down underneath the previous row's stitch. So if I let that go around, and this is our black one, here's our black one, the first of the row. So it's pushing the stitch from the previous row down to the back, getting ready to grab the yarn for the next row. Okay, so we've done as many rounds as I want to, so now I have to cast off and the instructions are telling me to cut the yarn off at about 35 inches, that's a long way, pull it through the yarn holder, so I'm going to be taking it out of here and then thread the yarn needle and then I'm going to be taking off the stitches. So I'll just get that done and I'll come back once I've got this needle threaded. So now I need to cast off and apparently that's this is how I do it with this needle and I think what I'm going to be doing is taking the stitches off these pegs. Hmm, I'm wondering if that means I've got a drop stitch here. I might have to fix that before I start because you can see that stitch is definitely on, that stitch is on. I think this is a missed stitch so I'm just going to have to lift that over onto there. And that one as well. I'll fix fix those two up, put those stitches back on those little pegs and then I'll start trying to cast off. Okay so I actually had to go and watch a video how to do this because I wasn't really sure what the instructions were telling me. It does kind of tell me one I have to go you know go alternately through the front and through the back so uh, I guess that's what I'm going to do. That's not what the video I just watched said. But so what I'm going to do is you need to pick up each each stitch off these little red pegs. So if I sort out the yarn, pull it through, and so that one I went that way. So this one I'm going to go. Sorry, that's the one that I've already picked up. So this one I'm going to take off this way. So lost the stitch, so I have to sort that out. It's a bit tricky with one hand, so I'm just going to put the camera down for a sec. 